Well, I do have a photograph here on my computer, so I will go ahead and I will start this. Um, I'd like to call on um, public hearing to order the court the roll. All present except for Commissioner Kerr. And did he notify any of us ahead of time at all? So I will open this public hearing. This is a public hearing to hear comment on blight on 614 Lake Street. So this public hearing is for blight at 614 Lake. Um, this year we have sent letters on April 22nd, the first letter, May 6th of this year, and June 5th of this year. Um, we have a PowerPoint that if Karen could pull that up. Actually, before and current pictures and before pictures, and I've also talked to the owner of the property today who was here. Um, so when, this, you said, when you said notice it up, did you send it up to the owner? The then? owner, yes. Um, so here's a picture of the, the rear yard where there was debris in the back before. There still is some things that need to be taken care of, which I spoke about with Mr. Porter who was here today. Um, <coughs> on the right, you can see there's a wood pile, and there's also a little pile of debris, wood debris, building material debris to the left, which we spoke about today, that we need to get, get rid of. Um, in the next slide, we have the front porch before, and then a current picture today on the right. So he's done quite a bit of cleanup up there. Um, and the next areas are items that we spoke about today, some building debris on the left, there's a bunch of block work, which he plans on getting rid of here shortly. Um, a car, which also he plans on getting rid of. And then there's some motorcycles and a camper which just recently brought there, which he'd be getting all that is, I believe he said in the next week or so. So that's what we have at current as of this state day. I don't know if you have any questions for me or for him. Commissioners, any questions on this time? So Jason, you would say that for being way out of compliance, he's not just somewhat out of compliance like me. Um, yeah, there's a few things that need to be taken care of, and he indicated in the next 20 to 30 days that those things would be gone. Yeah. I would buy that day. I noticed that the motorcycles were no longer on the sidewalk. They were up in the yard, which was where they belong. And, uh, there's a few things I thought still had been. There was a copier machine on the front porch and a few things, but it was, it was much better. Any other questions or comments for Jason? Okay, this is a public hearing, so if there's anybody in the audience who wishes to speak at this time on the right on 614, like you are more welcome to post for the hand to speak to me. Kim Raccoon, I live at 822 Sealy Street. I will say that Mr. Porter, my husband spoke to him about two weeks ago, and has done kind of a fabulous job of, of reversing the problem that was there. But the fact of the matter still remains, it's a nice one. Um, the fact of the matter remains that Mr. Hartlow, as far as we know, still resides there. We, it's great now, but what is the city going to do for the homeowners that are there to get, make sure that that fence gets taken care of, that the camper and the motorcycles are taken care of? We've got our home for sale. We've got another issue of light right across the street. It's like all of a sudden our neighborhood has become the place we're dumping. And that just can't happen. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mike Cerneski. Uh, my wife and I live on Garvey Street, one block away from this eyesore. If you go ahead and say everything is okay today, I can almost guarantee you that it'll be back in that shape tomorrow or the next day. We can't just let it go. We've got to take care of it. Uh, grab the bull by the horns. It's got to be stopped. Uh, most of you know of John Hotelou's record. Uh, it's not only in uh, 
there was an instance on Section 12 Road that cost the county something like $50,000. The one in Ironwood has cost the taxpayers somewhere around $70,000. And now, for those of you who are aware of it, Besmer Township has about 20 acres for John Ironwood's dumping that consists of probably some around a thousand washers and dryers and refrigerators. Uh, if you want to see that one, that's all you have to do is go on the internet and you can see the picture of that one. So this is kind of stuff. There's a lot of us in this community who do a lot to try to keep our properties clean and orderly and well taken care of. We don't want to live next to slums. And that's what this is. Before John Hardin moved in there, it wasn't much better, but it's gotten worse. And we want it stopped now. Thank you. Yes, uh, Paul Durbovsich here. That is an eyesore, and anybody can agree with it. But what about the next 20? That anybody, anybody that walks around this town, because he See another, let's get some, let's get the show on the road, this light on the road. This town needs to be cleaned up, and it needs to be cleaned up now. That's, how we got in the, what I'm getting at is, how's John number one on a hit parade? People have been complaining about these yards for five to ten years, and nothing's been done. Nothing has been done. So let's get somebody that's going to do the job, and do the job right, put some pressure on these people. You right around this town, it's a pig sty. Get these people to cut their grass. Get these people to clean these yards up. Start, knock, start, start knocking on people's doors. Get somebody to do that, to clean this town up. Because it's, it's nasty. Thank you. Just uh, as an FYI, we do have a, a regular blight list that is being um, attacked. You know, we have our steps, I mean, first step, second step, third step. And there are quite a few people that are being harassed on our table. Hey, Richter's place has been like that for 10 years. I, I do have a, I do have a question okay. for for Jason. Um, so he got sent three letters over what is um, just short of two and a half months. Um, what I, I mean, like I, I do I too would sort of agree with Mr. Gavadis that there are some places that have been outstanding for much longer, and I want to make sure that like we I don't think it's any surprise that we know um, Mr. Harlan's background, but. We, sh we should be attacking all of these with the same sort of fervor. Um, we do go after a lot of them. The problem is a lot of our ordinance states, like vehicles take longer to address. You know, so situations like, you know, ones that are being sold over there, they have vehicles that get an extra time, time, so you won't be seeing those for probably another month and a half, but there will be plenty more public hearings. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from the audience here? My name is Paul Porter, I'm the owner of that property on 614 Lake, and I just had maybe a couple questions. Um, in order to, well, he, uh, Jason spoke about these latest matters, and part of them have been dealt with, and part of them are to be dealt with in the next few days. Um, but someone was referring to history past before that. And I don't know exactly for sure what they're talking about or what, the, what comes of that. Um, I guess my question is, what's the, what would be the requirements to be satisfactory um, as a resident there, as a house, or a property, and so forth? Are there a list of things? Are there a list of things yet that I haven't heard about? That with you will just have to work with our light officer and yeah. he can tell you what is acceptable and what is not and the new time frame of addressing what is acceptable and what is not. Okay. Um, because I don't know fully what's on your property, um, so it's best to work with um, our light officer and public safety to address the things that need to be looked at for I guess another question I would have is what, what is y'all's opinion of of uh, some of the statements that have been made here about uh, certain individuals, either my place or Mr. Hartley, um, as 
far as um, the attitude of putting a stop to something or changing, changing or whatever. I mean, what are we talking about? Exiling people from town or what? I mean, what's what does that mean? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yes, I do. I, okay. My thought is that Mr. Hardy has a very distinct history of creating these kinds of problems, and we would not be doing our due diligence if we weren't aware of what he was doing. We don't want to spend another fifty or seventy thousand dollars like we just did last year. We have much better uses for that money, and I am comfortable with us keeping an eye on it as it were. Uh, okay, but so when you say keeping an eye, you're saying if he infringes a uh, violates the ordinance, then you're going to do something about it. Right? We're going to keep an eye on the light. <coughs> We shouldn't have to. No, we shouldn't have to. Um, but you also have a responsibility to treat him as a citizen as well, don't you? Uh, the trailer port is extra above and beyond the ordinance. Uh, 
um, and then the garage would be a, a second additional structure to be detached garage. And then the other part of this variance request is the size of the garage. Um, so the current ordinance only allows up to 200 square feet for that additional structure. Um, this one is much larger at 32 by 44. Um, so, with that being said, the staff report provides the variance criteria uh, for the zoning ordinance that's required to be met in order to grant a variance. The first variance request is considered a use variance, um, so there, the standards are set there. Um, for the zoning, or, zoning ordinance, all standards are required to be met in order to grant a variance. And with the use variance, um, in order to grant that, four out of the five uh, must be in favor of the applicant. The second variance is a dimensional variance or a non-use variance. And again, the criteria with which to grant a variance is in the report. And again, all, all criteria required to be granted or met in order to grant a variance. And that variance uh, requires a three out of five vote to in favor of the applicant's grant. With that, I will answer any questions. Did this, did this go to the planning commission? No, this just comes straight to the board. Yes. Do you know the size, the overall size of uh, Mr. Colasar's lot? His lot is <coughs> three point five acres. Thank you. So it, it is a rather large lot. Um, so based on the. Uh, Lot sizes, there are different ranges of size of the garage and, and number of units. Um, it is a large lot, so it's larger than most um, R1 zone lots in the city. Why is uh, uh, why is this one an R1? Um, considering that like a lot of the lots next to them, like it seems like this would be a, a different type of zoning looking at the spaces next to them. Right. Uh, that's just what it is. I, I don't know the history of why this property is on the Those are things that um, city can look at in the future with this kind of plan to see you know, if this area is appropriately zoned or if there should be changes made. Has there been anybody opposed to it? Sure. Not that I've heard. I've gone out there, I know it's an odd shaped piece of property, and three acres seems to be more than we deal with when we talk about a regular lot. I think if you put a garage, you can kind of basically see the garage as you take a look at the, the boundaries and whatnot. You that probably area. won't see it much, and there's not much use for that, for that line, really. It's all kind of wooded, and you're not using it for the yard right now, it's just mm -hmm. wood. Right. So, I don't It just, 
the, the argument almost just doesn't even make sense in this case because it's, the lot is so huge that why are we, why are we limiting this enormous lot? I, I agree, but yet yeah, it's our ordinance, but so it's, that's, it's that's our own fault. Right. So um, I think this is a, a flaw maybe in our ordinance that needs to be addressed. Doesn't doesn't help us now, but I think we need to modify our ordinance to allow for something more in a case like this. There's nothing but woods there. It's huge. Commissioners, any other questions or comments at this time? This is a public hearing, so if there's anybody in the audience that wishes to speak on uh, 701, that's the report now in the time to approach the podium So it's okay, I'm Jim Lau, Colasar, and I'm going to have lost the build of Dragon Lab Garage here. So it says, I just would uh, uh, done like to be granted up. Uh, variants in that so as I can build a garage so as I can uh, 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 put all of my vehicles in and everything and and uh, so as I can take them out of my uh, uh, parents uh, um, place and everything else because they uh, 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 done and passed away and so this is one of these days we're uh, going to be uh, selling it and so as in the future is as soon as I figure out what I'm going to do, uh, dug on with the trailer there. So it's just that if I'm granted this and that is, so is in the future when I get rid of the uh, trailer, that is all. So it's all probably take, take the uh, trailer part uh, uh, down and everything, but, 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 but I, I would uh, really uh, appreciate it. So is it if I was on uh, uh, grant that? What kind of garage are you putting up? Like a pole building or a normal? Just a plain old uh, stick that one. So is in fact the garage is going to be the same, exactly as what the uh, dug on house looks like. So is a garage. So where, so where, so where, so where everything there is going to be uh, uh, dug on uniform. So is that it's not going to be uh, so is that an eyesore and everything else and that. So is in fact just like the uh, 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 Rick was talking and you know, so as I got woods there and so is another person probably won't even uh, 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 see it in there. So okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. Anybody else in the audience wish to speak on this property at this time? Okay. Okay, close this public hearing. Okay, so just to remind you, um, Michael, we're this is zoned. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to go back and look at those specific regulations. I know that the R3, the rural residential, uh, is much more relaxed when it comes to uh, accessory buildings and square footage and size.
Any further discussion or concerns on this item? Kevin Wilcox. Chair. Yes. Seymour. Yes. Sim. No. Tower. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Okay, we have a motion that has passed for the additional building. We now require a second motion to allow to exceed the size limit. I'll make a motion to grant rights number two to the section 34-54 of Paragraphs 3 of the zoning ordinance to allow an additional 505.5 square feet of land to be built on. I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Tower, second by Commissioner Sino to grant the variance number two to section 34-53-7 as described in item number six. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? Can I do a roll call? Simo? Yes. Sim? No. Tower? Yes. Kerr? Yes. Carpen? Yes. Motion passes. Madam Mayor, could I make a I really would think that this, this should be on our planning Nature, the extremely large nature, it's just counterintuitive to be so <laughs> We've seen a, this kind of thing come up now a few times. So this uh, this issue of, of like kind of looking at our zoning again really needs to be a priority. That, and I know that our our you know can deals with that, but it should be right at the top of the list. Yeah, and the planning commission did review this topic, this the garage issue, um, for a number of months and as we discussed previously, after three or four months of debate between the Planning Commission, um, they felt that in general the ordinance was okay the way it was. Now, obviously, you've indicated through this process tonight that this is a unique lot. Um, but so that's an issue to deal with. And, you know, through a zoning ordinance update, a major update to, to the entire zoning ordinance is um, necessary, I believe, in my opinion. Uh, so that's something that should be addressed and uh, discussed further with the Planning Commission. Okay, looks like it's about time for our second public hearing. I would open the public hearing to your comment on variance request to the record 20 by 26 to allow on one by the request for the next years. So with this request, um, another garage variance request, this one is slightly different than the previous one. So this request tonight, there are two requests. They are both um, dimensional requests or non-use variance requests. The, and they both have to do with the amount of square footage or maximum square footage and allowances for building on the lot. Um, so this property, um, the gentleman would like to erect a 520 square foot garage. Um, property zone R1 and the two variances. The first one is regarding the uh, rear yard um, coverage. There's a 25% maximum coverage in the rear yard. and Based on the um, how small the lot is and the size of the house, the footprint of the house, there's not much land left in the rear yard to build on. Um, kind of interesting. The, uh, the rear yard shows the measurements here. Um, there wouldn't be much room left. It exceeds it by um, 248 square feet would be what you need to grant it. To be able to build on it. The second variance is in regards to the total lot. So the first variance is in regard to the rear yard, the rear lot, yard, and then the second variance request is for the entire yard. So we have two different maximum size limits or square footage based on the percentage of the lot that can be covered. Um, and based on what's already built, um, what the ordinance would allow him to build on right now, he would only actually be able to build an additional 14 square foot structure based on the size of the lot, his existing house, and what he, what he wants to build on. So in this case, again, it's kind of a unique situation where uh, he just wants to put a garage up. He doesn't even have a garage. Um, but because of the small confines of the lot, um, <coughs> he's requesting the variance tonight, the two different variances. So with that, I can answer any questions you have. Have you heard anything from the neighbors at all? Um, no one, in, no one opposed to it. Is the uh, owner here today? He yes. Is. Commissioners, additional questions or comments? 
membership is going. I have questions for the owner. Okay. Um, it is a public hearing, so if anybody from the public wishes to speak at this time, I guess we do And what he has to say. When I uh, got the house site, there used to be a 20 feet long by 12 garage there. I ripped it down because it was rotted all junk. And uh, I just need some to put my four wheeler and uh, small wheels and stuff like that in, you know. And I got another truck, a pickup truck. I just kind of wonder where you're going to plow snow. I drove by there was trying to figure out exactly what you were going to do. It says new driveway, but there's already a driveway on that side. I did it already. Oh, the that's two years. Driveway. The last two years I did it's that. It's an existing driveway. And I okay. and I put new city sidewalks in it and mm -hmm. new sidewalk to the house and I didn't put a lot of you know time into it, you know. As I was trying to look in the backyard, I could see a structure that was back there. It looks like a small shed or garage. Is that yours? No, that's my neighbor behind me in the garage. Is there any reason why you want to leave that two feet gap between your house and the garage? Is that a fine issue? I don't want my uh, taxes to go up that much. I <laughs> <laughs> <Okay, enough. laughs> <laughs> Attached garage costs more than a detached one. Mm -hmm. well, I just, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to push my luck, you know. <laughs> you you would attach you would, you would, you would still run into the uh, same issues that you would be It'd be bigger than what I know now, I know. So there was a garage on there that was 20 by 12. Yeah. Correct? And you're requesting to erect a garage that's 20 by 26. Right. And it's right behind the house and it's offset behind the house. So you can't see it from the other street at all. It's just somewhere I, I need somewhere to put my four wheeler. It's about ten thousand dollar four wheeler. You know, it's all in the sun and I got snowmobiles and tools and I need somewhere to put this stuff. You know, it's somewhere to work on my stuff, you know, when it's below zero. Well, it's nice when people have garage, it's gonna keep everything right. contained I mean, in the area. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's in the yard or whatever. You go by there, you'll see I did a lot of work in the place. I go by there and do a good job. And I would follow the answer to what I was able to be the best in the property. I mean, new windows, new roof, new doors. I uh, just redid the whole basement then, drive all the way. Lots of time. When do you plan on constructing it to see the proof? As soon as you say yes. <laughs> I got it done by fall time, you know. It's, I mean, it's, I ain't gonna have it up on one day because I work 60 hours a week, you know, so. Well, commissioners, any other questions? Looking at the difference of the <coughs> 14 feet difference than the prior garage that was there? And, and the, the old garage wasn't even supposed to be there, right? For him, for you, 
to grant the various to this gentleman and his family. Because if they need it, then he needed that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else at this time? Okay. <coughs> item four, no, item two, close public hearing, and item number three. I got, I got something else to say. Well, all my neighbors are on the assigned uh, paper already. They may not care. Okay. Item three, consider action on the variance. Are, are there two parts to this? There are. Okay, there are two different motions, so I this is on your uh, on your staff report um, with a suggested wording. I will make a motion that we get to the variance number one. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Cater to grant variance one to section 34-53-3 as noted in item three for our public hearing tonight. Any further questions or comments on this variance? Can I do a roll call? Seb? Yes. Tower? Yes. Kayer? Yes. Samo? Yes. Parker? Yes. Here we have a second part. We have an action. I'll make a motion that we approve variance number two as described in our packet. Second. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Cater, to grant variance number two to section 34 54 and three, as noted in item three of our packet tonight. Any further questions or comments on this? Can I do a roll call? Tower? Yes. Cater? Yes. Simo? Yes. Sam? Yes. Parker? Yes. Right. Thank you. And that being said, I'd like to adjourn the Zoning Board of Appeals and call our ready meeting to order to be ready for the next meeting. Thank you.
how I do the time to speak the items that are on the agenda. Okay. Item H, citizen division to just address the provision on them that are not on the agenda. Same thing. You may not like fees if you're able to approach the podium and state your name. My name is Louis Brown Cone. My wife Kim and I live at 822 Celia Street. We live across the street from 823 Celia, which is owned by Mrs. Carol Blodgett, and is now being occupied by her son, Michael Blodgett. In May 2013, we wrote Mrs. Blodgett a letter enclosing pictures showing what condition her property was in and requesting that she please take care of um, the manners. The house had roofing missing and pieces of roofing hanging down from the roof. The porch was beginning to fall in, the grass was 12 to 14 inches high, and there was a shed whose roof had a large hole in it and many of the shingles missing, as well as siding missing. All of this is clearly visible from our front lawn and front porch. Her son, Michael Blodgett, arrived at 823 Celia sometime in the fall of 2013. He got a work crew to rebuild the house. He has maintained the lawn and hired someone to repair the sagging porch. We have noted and appreciate what he has done uh, with the property at 823 Celia. However, the shed which Michael said he would tear down last fall remains the eyesore it was over a year ago. We continue to hear excuses from Mr. Blodgett why this building has not been torn down, as he told Light Enforcement last year that it would be. Then when it set in and with no action being taken on the building. Last year's excuses have now carried over to this year, and the shed is still there. I have, on at least two or three occasions, offered to help uh, Michael Budget tear down and remove the shed. These offers have also been met with excuses. My wife and I are now in the process of selling our home, and we really don't need a blight issue staring potential buyers in the face when they come to visit and view our home. Additionally, the city has given the Blodgetts more than one year to remove this unsafe and blighted shed from their property. It's, therefore, we are requesting the city commission to direct the blight reinforcement to, uh, not to grant any further extensions to the Blodgetts for compliance. If removal and cleanup has not taken place in the allotted time, we would like to see the city landlord order the removal and clean up of this building and build a homeowner for any or all costs incurred. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like a reasonable request. Um, I would just like to, know, to have our flight officer check in this property and see if there's any uh, non-compliance issues on the property and the report back to the um, Any other students wishing to address the commission on items not on the agenda? <coughs> Sister again. The reason why I'm here is in my old neighborhood on the 900 block of Celia Street, you just go east of that a little bit where the, where the gravel road is, put a big pile of dirt there. You cannot get through that road. There, there's a family, if there's a family there, the Templar family, they're in their 90s. If something was to happen, an emergency vehicle could not get to that house. Mrs. Templar had to leave her house. Go across Donna and Bob Madsen's yard, across Fred Ross's yard, to get to uh, Florence Street so she, can, so she can get in and out of her house. Why was that big, big pile of gravel put there? There was no reason for it. That, that there should be at least one lane in that road open. Because you know, if if there was any reason for the emergency vehicle to get through there, they, they, can't get, they can't, cannot get down that road for anybody. I, just, I saw that myself today, and it's a problem. Okay. Uh, one lane should 
be open and the whole world fucked up. That should be addressed at some point. And I, and I know Bob, Bob, Bob Max is here. He said that Joel's son, Joel, called Coleman Engineering. Yeah. They made a complaint about it. He did last Friday. And he said he was going to call again today. If it wasn't taken out of it, it's still there. It's still there. That, that gravel's still there. That gravel should be taken out of here tomorrow. You're right. I should go last Thursday. Oh, it's been there for a week at least. That yeah, it's been there. Right on the street. Yeah. It started out half the street blocked off, then they blocked the whole street. Okay. Give me for the information, we'll try to get that to public safety and our DPW or whoever. Yeah, maybe about yeah, because no, those people are in their 90s and if something was never happened, yeah, no, they're very, very different people. They started pulling the blacktop up in front of their house all the way down the street, so you couldn't get through that way. Well, thank you for the information, we'll address it, we'll get public safety to look okay. at it from there. And one other thing I noticed, you're looking for a part-time help in the community development office over here. And one thing I've never seen, one of the things that you were searching for was full-time private sector jobs. That wasn't in the description of the job application. What's more important than full-time private sector jobs? That's what this community needs. It does not need parks. It does not need trails. It needs full-time private sector jobs. That should be the number one first thing on it great for this community. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments at this time? No? Okay. We'll take a look. Any new I discuss and consider resolution 014-022, a resolution determining that a hazard that exists at 614 Lake Avenue and authorized cleanup. We're here to discuss um, the 614 Lake Avenue now. I know uh, Mr. Porter was here, he was the owner of the property, he made some good efforts. And, you know, I would think a month or you know a little bit of time to let him finish up the project would be best for us. I don't know if you guys have any questions or if maybe you want to talk to him about how long he thinks it will take. He's done two thirds or more of the work already. I'm just inclined to let Mr. Porter off the hook, but I do agree with Jason that, you know, if we get engaged in this process, we can pull out a little more time. Um, Mr. Porter, how much time do you think you need? I would expect it should be satisfactory within two weeks. That's not probably less, but I'd say two weeks because sometimes things don't go very well. I'll make a motion that we revisit this item in the second meeting in July. Second. What's the date of that meeting? What would be there? Two weeks, the 28th. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Motion by Commissioner Simo, second by Commissioner Tower to revisit resolution 014 022 during the second meeting of July. Any further discussion or concerns on this item? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item J discuss and consider granting a request for a special water rate that will be on fair from August 14th to the 17th. We've done this in the past, it's a great activity to have the community involved and visitors involved. So, um, Commissioner Simo has made a motion to approve the request. Commissioner Tower has seconded it. Any further discussion concerns on this item? What is the special water rate? <coughs> it's usually a bulk water rate, isn't it? Any further comments or concerns? I, I understand. I'm going to ask another question. What, uh, like, what was the amount that was paid last year? Our treasurer and our water person is not here tonight. I mean, so we'll get it for you by the next meeting. I'll I would appreciate that if we would have had that before we voted. Just saying. Okay. Been motion by Commissioner Seymour, second by Commissioner Tower to grant the right special request for the library. Can you look for
stone be able to flip this.
Yeah, they're, they're, I texted the superintendent already. Oh, it's done already. No, thank you. Thank you. Any other items? I have one. I just realized I made a mistake when I was the for COSARS. Variants like COVID from the uh, wrong um, sheet. One from the second one versus the first one. How can I fix that? I don't ask, I don't know.